a Bitcoin at a million dollars or two million dollars or five million dollars. I mean, literally, it's going to make people's head explode. They're just they're not going to be able to more fiat will be converted into Bitcoin, actual yeah. transaction, not paper, but actual transaction, than the history of Bitcoin. In the first 15 years, the price of Bitcoin is about to explode. In this video interview with Morgan Creek CEO and billionaire investor Mark Yosko, he discusses the full impact of the approval of the spot ETFs and what they will do for Bitcoin. He starts by discussing the impact of the ETFs and their significance going forward. He also explains the cause of the flash crash post-approval, and while doing so, dismisses the fears surrounding BlackRock and market manipulation. He explains that spot ETFs are vastly different from futures contracts, in that the asset actually needs to be purchased, and so it will be very difficult to manipulate prices going forward. He goes from there to discuss why this year will be the single most consequential year year in Bitcoin's history yet and what the price implications could be. Let's dive in to hear it from him. I think we absolutely have met and exceeded expectations, especially because expectations changed very dramatically right after the release of or the approval of, of the ETFs. So, you know, coming into the year, I was pretty convinced that that they were going to approve the ETFs and that that was going to accelerate this low trend toward fair value. And fair value, if you look at the Metcalf's Law model, we talked about this last year even, was somewhere in the low 50. And so by the halving, and the halving is, you know, third week of April this year, I thought we would drift, you know, from the, the 30s up toward 50 and people would be pretty pretty happy with that. But the accelerant to that would be yeah. the approval of ET. Well, well, why is that an accelerant? Well, it's a demand shock is there were a lot of people said, oh, this is a buy the rumor, sell the news. You know, it's already priced in. And we had the move from 30 to, I think we got all the way up to 47. And yeah. we said, oh, it's going to crash right after. Now we've had this massive run. You know, we went from 47 all the way back. I think we hit 38. People are like, see, I told you, sell the news. Yeah. And the stalwarts were like, that's a gift. Right? Yeah. I can buy more yeah. at a cheaper price. Now, if you and, and I, don't, I don't even call myself a conspiracy theorist, but if you believe, as I do, that if you're a large investor and yep. you know that you need to buy a big old chunk of something, what is the oldest trick on Wall Street? What do you do, right? If you want to buy a lot of something, you actually sell it. You actually spread Correct. rumors that it's lousy and you push the price down. I mean, you know, Dwight Anderson used to work for Julian Robertson. He tells this story all the time. They wanted to buy a big position in copper. And he's like, all right, Julian, here's my, my report on, on copper. Let's, let's go buy it. And Julian's like, yeah. are you joking? We'll sell 50 million copper. And then you tell people that we're selling copper because I want to buy more than 50 million of copper. I want to buy a lot of copper. And Soros would do the same thing. And I mean, so BlackRock knew that they were going to have to buy a bunch. Perhaps they were the ones telling people to sell. Yeah. Maybe. You think that was the message on Wall Street? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, look at Jamie Come Dimon. On. So far, Mark has discussed the spot ETFs, the events that surrounded their approval, and his outlook as we go forward. He's in agreement with numerous other experts who believe the ETFs will open the floodgates to an unprecedented amount of capital. He's also provided insight into what potentially caused the corrections. Next, he addresses why we shouldn't be worried about future manipulation by these institutions. These are spot ETFs, meaning when BlackRock gets an order or when Bitwise gets an order, Fidelity gets an order, they have to go find actual Bitcoin. Yes. They can't just buy futures contracts and pretend they have Bitcoin. So what you're seeing in the last week is a mad scramble. Yes. Literally a mad mm -hmm. scramble for Bitcoin because in the first few days, actually first few weeks, every dollar that was coming in that BlackRock and Bitwise and Fidelity and Valkyrie had to buy, GBTC was selling. 200 million, 400 million, 500 million was coming out and that was available to buy with the new inflows. Well, suddenly no one was selling GBTC and they still had to come up with, you know, on some days, 10,000 Bitcoin. There's only 900 yeah. created. 
every day. So you had this massive supply demand imbalance. And the rumor was yesterday or the day before that the OTC desks basically they were, were dry. They just didn't have any Bitcoin to sell. Mark has explained that unlike futures contracts, spot contracts require immediate purchase of the asset in question. So manipulation will be more difficult compared to Grayscale in 2021. Next, he moves to the highlight of this interview, his price predictions for Bitcoin. Let's head back in. And I haven't done the math exactly and counted, but I think it's right around 300 billion. I think it's a little bit less than that. And, and that's what? That's 1%? And, and of, exactly. Uh, but what, and the crazy pool, yeah. part is that's on a trillion two. I think this year, 300 billion, which again is more than all the money that's been converted yeah. in the past, comes in. Well, where's that 300 billion number come from? Not just out of the sky. There's 30 trillion with a T. And that's, remember, 1 trillion is a dollar every second for 31,710 years. That's a lot. 30 trillion owned by us, boomers, controlled by our advisor, the UBS, the Merrill Lynch, the Vanguard, whatever. Okay. If those advisors say 1%, one percent, one, that's 300 billion. Wow. So it's not 10%, it's not 50%, 1%. $300 billion may not seem like a lot, especially since the current market cap of Bitcoin alone is starting to near $2 trillion. But Mark explains that the entry of capital into a commodity is not linear or additive. In essence, Bitcoin isn't going to grow by $300 billion if $300 billion worth of capital is pumped into it. Mark explains the concept of a multiplier and that Bitcoin's multiplier could be as high as 100 in essence for every $1 pumped into Bitcoin. Prices will rise $100. Now imagine the impact of 300 billion. That's an increase of 30 trillion in Bitcoin's market cap, which would send Bitcoin to over 1 million per coin. Mark does advise some conservativeness, but in general, he has never been more bullish. What do you think about Mark Yosko's absolutely bullish price predictions? To see the latest in crypto news, watch this video here.